Okay, it is a Friday morning. Welcome to the weekend, right? We're looking at, uh, this is Shadow. You probably know who Shadow is. I'm late to the party on this, but uh, right, she's the bald eagle up at uh, Big Bear. And live camera, a couple things I love about this live camera. First of all, it's Friday, it's awesome. Although, the retirement thing has me slightly confused. Uh, which makes sense, it would, right? I mean, but literally I'm like, Friday means nothing. I mean, it doesn't mean nothing, but it means, it means I can have a couple beers because I only can, I have a beer on, a couple beers Friday, a couple beers Saturday. Then I shut it down during the week just because my job, I always work nights, so why develop bad habits? So that's cool. Um, but uh, anyway, this is Shadow and she's eating right now. And I was noticing this earlier. This is the, where's the, uh, Jack, or no, that's Jackie. Jackie's the female right there. And females are bigger than the males, substantially. Like, I think like a third bigger. See how the kind of carry on there? She was eating a little while ago, but that kind of, you can see the discolored snow. That's where um, Shadow, the husband, brings the food. And she's got three babies now, all three eggs hatched. Um, it's just magical. A couple things going on this morning when I pulled this camera up, which tells you a little bit about me. I pulled it up this morning, it's like she's covered in snow. I'm like, oh God, I hope she's okay. I hope that third baby, I mean, it's really, this beautiful nature drama playing out. Now, talk about nature snacks. I think that's, you know, you, there's, uh, God, there's a Dr. Fitzpatrick, Patrick, Rhonda Patrick, I think, or she's awesome. She's like an internet doctor, like Huberman and those guys. But she uses, does exercise snacks, right? Where you get up every hour and you do a push up or you do something and that's good for you. And I think along with that, nature snacks are huge. Because I mean, just watching her, is beyond awesome. It just is uh, beautiful to behold. And she is quite happy on that nest. Um, eagles mate for life, that's really cool. Live for 20 or 30 years. Not quite, they don't, 30 years is the high end. I, I think in captivity they live not as long. Um, but I think in the wild they can live upwards of 30 plus years. They can go 15 pounds, female is bigger. Their eyes are eight times stronger than ours. So it's like looking through binoculars. And the thing I note when I watch her, we're gonna to get to the weather, by the way. Got rain coming, but not this weekend. This weekend's gonna be awesome from Southern California all the way up to Seattle. Um, what I love about her is look how alert she is all the time. Like I've only seen her sleeping a couple times. Like she's just, her head's on a swivel. Um, yeah, I can't do the volume because it bleeds into this volume, but on, on, on the mic, but the sound of the wind through the trees, when you play it at home, it's just ridiculously awesome. Um, I'm gonna, as soon as I get done here, I'm gonna put it up on my big screen. Okay, um, grip strength, she, she, can, she can bear down 400 PSI, pounds per square inch for, with those talons. And a guy can grip down maybe 90 pounds per square inch. Yeah, I'm pretty strong, so 100 pounds if you're a badass, um, is what people can uh, bear down on. Females are bigger, so they mate for life. They're awesome. She's beautiful. I love that. Such a great idea. But you talk about the ultimate nature snack. This is a nature snack too. This is a Golden Gate Park right there, right there. And um, I think that's the Palace of Fine. No, that's the, um, well, I always do this. I get myself into a corner. That's the Natural Museum. Gosh, I can't remember the name. You're going to shoot me on that one. Sorry, guys. Okay, there's Mount Tamalpais. There is, you can't really see Bolinas, but what you can see is where Marin County back in the 60s had the foresight to, do, to um, come up with Trust for Public Lands, TPL, and they kept this from being built up. They were gonna build houses all through the Marin Headlands. If you've ever been in the Marin Headlands, not been in the Marin Headlands, get your ass over there. It is, I mean, I don't wanna crowd it out. It's beautiful. I, I remember when it was a military base out there, a couple of military bases but uh, just open space. It looks like California did 100 years ago. Doesn't, there's, no, there's no telephone wires. I mean, there's a few on the road on the way out to Cronkite. Um, okay, so that's uh, our first of many live cameras. This is UC San Diego. What can we do here? I think they changed cameras on me. So we'll go to Mount Tamalpais and you can see Ocean Beach. No surf advisory, but it's big. Swells along the coast right now are at four to eight feet. Smaller as you go into San Diego, but they're probably four to six feet down in the better breaks in San Diego. Temperatures today, 
Bay Area is going to be in the mid upper 60s. Like Santa Rosa is going to go 68, 69 degrees. Sacramento, you're in the mid 60s, maybe a little warmer. Um, as you head further south down towards Santa Barbara, you're in the mid upper 60s. Around um, Point Doom and into Malibu, you're into the upper 60s, low 70s, and that continues to the low 70s right down to San Diego. Those temperatures that I just riddled off, rattled off, are going to be with us all weekend. So the weekend's dry. The weather changes for Southern California on Monday and then for the rest of us on Tuesday, Wednesday with, with a pretty, I think next week's gonna be a pretty substantial looking weather system. And there's, oh, that's Santa Barbara. Okay, Santa Barbara, as I mentioned, is gonna be, that's State Street right in here. And that's the Biltmore, or used to be the Biltmore. I think it's the Rosewood Hotel now. There's a sick way of Hammonds, which is right there. It used to be kind of a secret spot. It breaks sometimes. Okay, Mount uh, Shasta. And a little snow still in the trees right there. Just a little sprucks of snow. So it's a nice little dump. They got three to four inches at Lake Tahoe over the last 36 hours. Snow lines down eh, pretty low. And then Black Butte right there. Okay, Mount Shasta. Year highs up there today are going to be in the upper 50s. This is San Diego. Um, am I? Yeah, UC San Diego. I got it wrong the other day. I called San Diego State. It's UC San Diego. Again, more on the nature snacks. This is this morning. Clouds are moving through. Weekend's going to be beautiful. Here is the satellite loop. We can look at everybody. We can look at our next system, which is way back here. This is that cold air where the eagle got snow on her and him. And this is where there are some winter weather advisories right now. There's also some wind concerns across the country. And generally quiet though, except, except for this area in, in the middle here. That area's got a little bit going on, but I don't see anything massively massive. Um, as we look at the watches and advisories, that gives you a good idea of what I'm talking about, right? So, you know, let's see what we got. Okay, so that's, uh, oh, they dropped the frost advisory for the Bay Area, interesting. They had a frost advisory for tomorrow morning, but I guess they dropped it. Um, or maybe it was, man, maybe they, yeah, I think they dropped it. Okay, and then that's a freeze concern. That's down around Bakersfield. There's a frost advisory here for tomorrow morning, uh, east of Southern California, Los Angeles, up towards Pasadena area. And then these pinks represent winter weather storm warnings, right? Blues are winter weather advisories. Pinks and reds are a little gnarlier, um, meaning winter weather, winter storm warning. Uh, and then what do we got here? We got some wind. There's some wind stuff there, right? The browns are wind. So I don't see anything scary though. Everything looks pretty, pretty, pretty manageable. The fire are the um, the uh, GFS sea level pressure 500 millibar or no uh, surface map. I want to show you slowly what we're looking at here. So circles around LA and around or Southern California, Northern California, or Central California. Here's your weekend, just clicking away. The lines are far apart, isobars, so it's not that windy. So it's kind of, it's gonna be a freaking nice weekend. And then you get into here, and you see that system tweaking underneath down this point conception, and it tweaks underneath. That's on uh, the times right up here, right? That's 9Z Tuesday, so Tuesday, Tuesday morning early early, early. And then this is 12, 21 Z. So it's the afternoon on Tuesday. So what that does, it clicks through Santa Barbara, through Santa Monica, through San Diego, and then is gone, but it effectively opens the door for system number two, a much more robust system and an equal opportunity system. It's going to rain from Seattle all the way down to LA. This is, as of now, we're at, let's click it into 12 Z. So 12 Z, Wednesday, that's 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. There it is. And that's a good looking weather system. And it's that's 5 a.m. And then here we are into Thursday afternoon. That looks pretty good. So Wednesday early into or Wednesday early into Wednesday afternoon. Sorry, I mean, it looks like so Wednesday looks like a pretty awesome day for weather systems. And then it lingers in the mountains into Thursday morning and then clears out. And then a progression of weather systems. March 17th, and that's not too big. Let's look at, yeah, March 7th, yeah, that's not bad. So this system looks pretty juicy, and now it looks at its juiciest at around uh, Wednesday afternoon. Um, and I was gonna say this, don't ever, I, 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 some, don't take the models at face value all the time. Take them, know where you live, know your region, know you got a thousand foot mountain behind you or you got an ocean in front of you or you're in a plane or whatever, 
but no, and then, and then look at that, it's pattern recognition. Look at that and go, hmm, what does that mean? Hmm, it means Orville Lake's gonna get a bunch of rain. Hmm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking at any cloud physics or any thermodynamic stuff. I'm just looking at that footprint going, what's that gonna mean? Now, we know the bullseye represents heavier rain. Will it be in that exact spot? It'll be close, but it won't be in that exact spot. And the timing will be different as well as you get closer to these things down. So that all, all I was saying there is, Pattern recognition, get good at looking at this model. That's not the only model, there's a lot of models, but I think the, the problem is you start looking at a bunch of models and you start looking at little granular differences, which is fine, but the models are not, the current models in my mind, I'm not, I'm not a PhD, but they're just not to be taken at you know, face value. Like that's what's gonna happen. Cause it's not what's gonna, it's kind of what's gonna happen. That's the best way to look at them. Okay, so that's that. That's um, that's your next coming weather event, Monday and then Tuesday night into Wednesday. Um, and then this is rainfall accumulation, right? It's just adding on. So here we are. This is all the way through the weekend. And San Diego, you show up with some scattered, pretty good little showers, you know, a tenth of an inch, something like that, by Tuesday morning. And then you see it fill in very lightly in Northern California. And then that's the system on uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then there's Wednesday morning. And then you see it sort of slow down. And then a couple of subsequent systems come in. So that's over the next couple of days, next four, couple of weeks. So you can see that the rain, rain footprint. Can we manage that much rain? Two, three inches in Marin County over 14 days? Yeah, we can. A bunch of snow in the mountains? Yeah, it looks like, actually looks like really beneficial rainfall. Just because we can do it, let's look at all the, 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 the country in terms of who's getting wet. And there's our system coming on shore. And then you kind of see, not a lot going on, pretty quiet. And then over the next 14 days, that's where the hot spots are, Pacific Northwest, over the next 14 days, and you just kind of go, oh, let's Pacific Northwest, so I can't read those numbers. My eyes are bad. A couple, certainly certainly three to five inches of rain. Yeah, more than that, actually. Those blues represent seven inches. So, but that's over a bunch of days. So it's all manageable stuff. Here we are at Palisades Tahoe, and the rush is on. The parking lot is full. You don't need parking reservations on the week on the weekdays, but you do on the weekend. I think, I, yeah, I think that's how it goes, yeah. So you have to get, you can't go there on the weekend without a parking reservation. And I wish the camera would switch, but it's not going to. So, but, but you can see, first thing you notice is snow in the trees. So it, that last system, I talked to Hudson up there and he said they got um, three or four inches, which wasn't very much. This is a live camera at Heavenly Valley. It is live, because there's the chairlift. Okay, I wasn't sure. And you got snow in the trees. That's always a good sign. So cooler, must have snowed a little bit late last night. This is the Donner Ski Ranch. I like the little ski resorts. Uh, they're cheaper and they're not as, they're not quite as, you know, high end. Cause the skiing's a, skiing's a rich guy sport, man. Let's face it. I mean, it's not, it's not for the faint of heart. F family of five, family of five going skiing. I remember with my dad, we'd sit, in the, <laughs> we were so cheap. This is sixties and seventies. But we'd sit in the parking lot, right? Eat our sandwiches. Never, you would, ne like if you forgot your gloves, or if you forgot one of your gloves, you were wearing one glove. Because we weren't buying a glove. We, you know, ski resort prices, they'll, they'll take you down. It was, you can't buy anything at the ski resort. It's marked up double. You know, right? We were, it, it, it's, it's like, you were there. You remember that. Um, and I think I did ski one day without a glove. Um, but it wasn't that cold, so it was no big deal. But Dad made a pretty pretty strong point of it. So that is Donner Ski Ranch. This is Ocean Beach. Pretty good size. This is this morning at about 10 a.m. The swell's going to hover in this in this range. The winds are slightly offshore. There's a little bit of patchy kind of hazy fog out there. Uh, this is Lindemar Beach. This is Malibu North. Uh, I say that because it has become the land of learning. First wave I ever got was here in 1978, and it was fun. You know, it's a it's not a very good wave. It can be okay, but it's a great spot to learn because you can walk out. That's a sandbar. That's all sand. There's a little bit of rock out here by the creek, but that's all sand, and you can walk basically walk like this guy right here's walking out. You can walk. That guy's right there. He could stand up right there. It's probably four feet deep. So you can walk out to it and then you don't have to paddle through and you don't have to get the big ones like that. You can stay on the inside and catch white water. 
Linda Marr, everybody. Okay, this is Doheny. Uh, temperature down there today will be at the beach is going to be about 67, 66. And you can kind of see the water's a little muddied up. It's been windy and they got a little bit of rain, which we know about. And then La Jolla, which is just beyond attractive. We talked about that yesterday. So pretty, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Never been stung by a stingray, but whenever I see like when you get south, that's a thing, right? Stingrays. My son got stung by a stingray and he said he cried. He was doing a... <laughs> He's a photographer, like a surf photographer and travels the world. He's in, in, where is he now? Perth or Sumatra or somewhere. But he got, it's funny because he was, I like this story only because he's, if you know my kid, he's such a sweet dude. Nice kid. Um, awesome guy. He's shoot, doing a photo shoot with some models down in Santa Barbara. This is a few years back. And I don't know if he wanted to, went in for a swim or he was shooting one of them in the water. You know, you, I don't know how, I'm not an artist, so I don't know how that all works. But he's in the water. He gets stung by a, a, a stingray. And he goes, Dad, you don't even get it, man. It hurt bad. It hurt bad. And, I, and he goes, I cried. And he goes, I cried in front of models. And he goes, that was brutal. He goes, they had to drive me to the car. And I was like, you felt bad, right? Because it's like, you know, I get, I get it. Because you're trying to be all not hurty. But when it hurts, it hurts. And I have heard that from numerous people. When you get hit by a stingray, it is painful. Ooh, got a fish in the nest. See, told you. Stuff's happening at the nest. Oh, she just moved. What's she doing? So there's a fish. That was a full fish carcass here. That, uh, Shadow is a hell of a hunter because he's bringing tons of stuff in. She's settling in right now. Um, she eats a lot, which is amazing. They made for life. Did I say that? Okay. So the weekend looks good. The um, everywhere. And then things change around starting Tuesday around the state, Southern California first, and then linger and then gets going for everybody from Seattle all the way down from into Wednesday and into Thursday. Lake Tahoe, you're gonna get a winter storm morning out of this. This is next week. And you'll get easily a foot to two feet of snow. I am going to continue to watch Jackie because she could do something awesome. God, she's beautiful. All right, again, sorry, it kind of went long again, but uh, I don't know, she's, she's got my attention. We'll see you back here tomorrow.